Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. This is the SSE composite. That is the Chinese stock market. I wanted to show this because um, I had covered the Chinese stock market and predicted it was going to break out into new highs. I actually still think so. Uh, you can see the trend line from 2000 is actually a very long uptrend line. This recent breakout was kind of uh, um, trying to move into a new pattern. You can see that by this uptrend line here. Am I still bullish on Chinese stocks? Absolutely. I think that if you remember how people had covered the Dow gold ratio and people like uh, um, some of the people on King World News, Richard Russell and others had talked about how the Dow gold is going to be one to one. Whether that means the Dow coming down from 17,000 to 5,000 and gold going to 5,000 or whether uh, both of them going to 35,000, but eventually they're gonna match up. I think the same thing's gonna happen with the Chinese stock market. I think that probably numerically, eventually the Chinese stock market's gonna be a higher number than the Dow. And speaking of the Dow, let's go look at the Dow chart after we have this news of this, I'm just gonna call it this hoax because it's this really, Actually, what I'm going to call it is a puppet show, and you'll see why in a second here. But uh, you can see that the Dow has got a big overnight plunge with the markets right now. This is the live UK chart. So you can see the Dow closed around 17,240 and is now down about 120 points from there. They'll probably rally it, and we know that there's the big uh, meeting going on in France as well. But... Uh, can you believe that nobody knew about this beforehand? I don't think so. I think the chart kind of indicates that some people knew that this was going to happen. But let's spend a little bit of time on this thing I'm going to call this puppet show. Now, the first thing I'm going to take you to is a post that I did Saturday morning after the news came in on Friday. And uh, this was uh, an observation that someone had made that uh, a lot of people had been looking at The Economist cover. I've shown you that before. Uh, this is actually, this snippet here that I took is actually a very small snippet of that. And um, it's kind of interesting because it, it's uh, something like the Sgt. Pepper um, album cover with all the people on it, but uh, it's very, very, very high resolution. You can see, you can e even see the face of this person driving the bus. That's how high resolution. This picture, this little section of that Economist cover, I think this is like maybe two or three percent of the entire picture, and you can see how incredibly detailed it is. But what people were speculating about was the meaning of this 11.5 and 11.3. And of course, a lot of people said, well, there's going to be a big event on between 11.3 and 11.5 of this year. Now, what's interesting about this is that someone on Godlike Productions noticed that if you take these numbers, 115 and 113, and you arrange them into a date for the year of 2015, the only date you can come up with is this date, 11.13.15, which happens to be Friday the 13th, and that happens to be the day where they, in my opinion, staged these false terror attacks. Now, there's a number of videos here from a lot of truthers who are out there, and there's a lot of evidence. You've got the typical, you know, passport, uh, just like they had in 911. To me, it's just stupid. Uh, honestly, for me, it's just, uh, I'll call it a puppet show. So this is about how seriously I take this. This is actually a the opening clip from the movie that came out in 2004. It's called Team America World Police. And uh, I've got a couple other videos here. Here's Red Silver Jay's hoax video. This is currently sticking at the top of the public blog. And here's another one from another truther. But let's watch this Team America World Police and uh, see how they saw ahead of time there'd be some Islamic terror event in Paris, France. Well, police, get down on the ground! Hey, terrorists! Terrorize this. Let's make this 
interesting. Kia! the Eiffel Tower. Damn, I missed him. Sarah, he's got the bomb. You gotta fix it. I got him, Carson. He's heading for the Louvre. Your plans are over. Everyone, don't worry, everything is bold. We stopped the terrorists. So you can see that Team America World Police has essentially destroyed Paris. Uh, I guess we had to destroy it to save it. So that's to me just a big puppet show. Uh, a lot of these things, I don't even pay attention to them anymore. This one I thought was a big one. Now, if, you're, if you uh, notice here, this picture, a lot of people were speculating that this was the Mona Lisa. It's not. Actually, it's called La Belle Ferronniere, the Louvre. So it is the Louvre, and, uh, and that's exactly what happened in that clip. So just a big puppet show to me, not really that important. Um, why do they do these things and push these things? Well because they're pushing the envelope. Uh, if you watch some of the other videos, you can see that there's no, supposedly there was a giant bomb that went off in a soccer stadium, but there's no, nobody got a cell phone footage of any of it. And they actually kept playing the game. So it's just a, a big puppet show. But uh, let's go over to the main story I wanted to look at here. This is a fascinating story. Uh, before we do that, I want to show you the debt to the penny real quick. Now, I want you to notice that last year in November, uh, uh, that's after they had kind of released the limit as they did this year. But you can see here, it's kind of interesting that from st starting at the 14th, and I just, again, I did 11-15-2014 to 11-15-2015 uh, uh, to get what the real deficit is. And uh, but if you notice here that uh, it's about that 17,946, that's about 18 trillion. And you can see it stood at 18 trillion really before it gets to 18,1. We're talking all the way up into February of, of this year. So it went a long time, a many months staying the same. But you can see when we do the math here, we've got 17,946 and we're at 186. For nine, so we're talking seven hundred billion dollars, and that's going to get a lot bigger. It would not surprise me if we hit a one trillion dollar window between the the yearly date. So I'm going to keep an eye on that moving forward. So let's get to the main story. That's going to be this SRS Rocco story. Uh, I don't agree with him on a lot of things, and we'll see here. He kind of just does a. He fudges it on the peak oil thing, which uh, I don't know how anybody can maintain peak oil right now, but we'll see what his comment. But this is a very interesting story here. Silver Wheaton actually is buying forward silver from Glencore. They're paying him $900 million uh, for silver at 20% of spot. So that's crazy on its face. Let's read it. Looks like Silver Wheaton struck it rich with its newest silver streaming agreement with Glencore. According to the deal, Silver Wheaton paid Glencore $900 million for future silver production from its share of its Antimina copper mine in Peru. Silver Wheaton received silver from this Glencore deal at 20% of the silver spot price. 
which means Silver Wheaton currently pays about $2.85 per ounce at current market price of $14.26. That's not a bad deal, especially when your cost is only 20%. I would imagine any of the primary silver mining companies would die to produce silver at a 20% cost. Peru's Copper Mine is owned by Glencore, BHP, Billiton, Tech Resources, and Mitsubishi Corporation. Produced about a third of Peru's Copper in 2013. According to the Bloomberg article, Glencore raises $900 million by selling future output. Glencore PLC sold a share of its future silver output in a deal that includes a $900 million upfront payment as the trading and mining company works to cut its $30 billion debt pile by about a third amid tumbling commodity prices. And I've showed you the copper chart. It's still falling. And uh, I told you before, it's going to get cut in half, and it will. The deal includes Silver Wheaton paying 20% of the spot price per delivered ounce. The Vancouver-based company said in a statement Tuesday, Silver Wheaton will receive an amount equal to 34% of silver production at the Antamina mine in Peru until the delivery of 140 million ounces and the equivalent of 23% of silver production thereafter, uh, Bar, Sw uh, Bar Switzerland-based Glencore said in a statement. This newest silver streaming deal with Glencore provides Silver Wheaton with the cheapest price per ounce based on current market price compared to all its other agreements. If we look at uh, Silver Wheaton, you can see the numbers there. Silver Wheaton will receive 5.1 million ounces of silver from Glencore for the first silver years and an estimated cost of 15.3 million a year based on the $15 market price of silver. They will sell that silver for 76.5 million, then a cool 61 million margin. Of course, I'm making this quite simple. There are more company costs involved. But and etc. So I want to get to the uh, real startling fact here, if I can find it, because it's kind of buried here. But uh, basically, they are purchasing 40 years of silver production. Uh, I'm not here. It is. Of course, the market price of silver will not remain $15 for the next 28 to 30 years. So here's much. Here's how much silver they're buying forward. Uh, we're talking about decades and decades of silver. Now, the first question that's going to come to your mind is, well, you can buy silver that's in the ground for $2.50. You can buy it for a penny. But the question is, is what does it cost to get it out of the ground? So that's the first objection to this sort of deal. It really looks like a Ponzi scheme scam to me. Uh, something like the U.S. government would do, uh, making promises way, way off in the future. Yeah, we're going to cut in 20 years. And, of course, no one knows what's going to happen 28 to 30 years out. So here we have another silver suppression scheme. They're suppressing silver by selling silver that's in the ground. Now, that sounds a lot like what the U.S. talks about with its gold reserves. They have this term, I think the term, uh, don't quote me on this. I think the term is deep storage, and really it's gold that hasn't been mined yet. So um, it's just absolutely crazy. Now, I didn't find the comment here, but uh, uh, Steve San Angelo says something about peak oil, and uh, he, he tries to turn it around here. You can see he says, this isn't speculation, it's just a matter of time, and I don't believe we have much time on our side. With the price of oil bracing to fall into the $30 range, peak oil will not occur because of high oil prices, but rather due to low oil prices that will kill production. Okay, yeah, you read that right. Um, so there's so much oil right now that the prices are so low that production will be killed, and eventually the price of oil will go up that's the definition of peak oil yeah so he's he's dead wrong on peak oil and i guess it's hard to admit when you're wrong but uh we don't have peak oil um, we have a collapsing commodities price all across the board and copper is going to bring glencore down so very, very interesting things going on. Now, let's take a look at the silver price. We've got a late night rally in silver, not really significant. Uh, something on the minute chart, you can see uh, a little bit of a boost. It kind of looks like maybe they've pushed it too far. Uh, it certainly is ridiculous to talk about uh, all the things that people say about, well, it costs this much to get silver. 
two dollars and fifty cents or whatever it is. Um, that's just phony accounting when they're talking about uh, how much it costs. They're just simply zeroing out the cost, and um, I, I think that Silver Wheaton probably is going to suffer the same way uh, everyone else does. Probably when this deal is reneged upon. The other thing you have to remember is that uh, they're selling something that if it turns out to be uh, of high value in the future, it's quite possible that the country that it comes from is going to turn around and nationalize the resource and then it doesn't matter what type of deal Glencore struck with Silver Wheaton. Um, if the country where it's mined decides to take it, then uh, that deal is off. So basically Glencore has sold something 30 years in the future a promise and they've raised a billion dollars. Uh, I personally think it's a really bad deal for Silver Wheaton, but uh, that will come out in the wash. So uh, just to sum up here, again, it was a, a crazy, it's a crazy weekend. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. There is a meeting uh, tomorrow, I believe it is, in Paris of these world elites, these world psychopaths, I'll call them, who love to stage things, but they also like to use predictive programming in the media to keep people guessing about what they're going to do and when they're going to do it. But really, honestly, it's just a puppet show. And we'll talk to you next time.